also recently someone decided to get into a rider truck and then mow down several dozen people, killing 10 people in the process and injuring 16 more. The perpetrator is currently in police custody, and as of the recording of this video, there is no motive given. So now we just sit back and watch the media start pointing fingers at whatever the hell they can get their hands on. I bet you this time they're gonna go back to that stupid video game argument, or driving simulator argument, or whatever argument they're gonna get. And they're just gonna keep banning things until there's nothing under the sun to ban. You know, kind of like how Great Britain's now trying to move towards banning knives, because, yes, as if the British Empire couldn't become more of a living onion atlas if it wanted to. Now I'm betting you Justin Trudeau is going to start saying we need to ban this, we need to ban that, or we need to crack down on this, we need to crack down on that. And you know, it's the same fucking argument that's used to say we need to ban guns. You want to know why it's the same argument? Well, here's the thing, is that it's about banning the means in which people go out to carry out evil. Bans like this almost never, ever work, because they always find some way to go out and carry out what they are going to do. You can ban the means all you want, but unless you get down to the heart of the reason as to why they want to do these awful things, they're not going to stop. You ban guns, they'll just get knives. You ban knives, they'll get prison shanks. If you ban prison shanks, they'll get rocks. And then, once you ban everything else under the sun except for dirt, because heaven forbid we get rid of trees because that is clearly good for the environment, they'll start using their fists. And guess what? You clock someone in the head at the right angle, at the right time, at the right force, you're gonna knock them out cold, and they will be dead before they even hit the ground because their blood pressure drops so quickly. Oh, and then what? Are we gonna ban fists? What's that gonna do? That's insane! And as we just saw in Toronto, some jackass decided to get into a car and began running people over. Same thing in Bastille Day a couple of years back. Someone decided to get a truck and then run over a large crowd of people. But no one's going to ban trucks because, believe it or not, that would cause the entirety of the infrastructure to shut down entirely. And also because Mrs. Prime Sinister and former substitute drama teacher Justin Trudeau are paid for by all these gas companies and are supported by them as well. So yeah, ban guns and knives even though cars kill more people. Again, it's not the how do you do it, it's the why do they want to do it. If you look at the why in many countries, that would stop a ton of violence. You could slash violence in half if you just looked at the why and stop trying to hack the means. Because the means are only the means to an end, and they'll find other means to that end. Because anything and everything can be used as a weapon, including paper. But let's look at the reasons as to why, starting with the U.S. of A. Now, crime in the U.S. had a sharp incline in 1960, around the same time they decided to free a lot of patients from the loony bins. And in part due to the sexual revolution, because now people were having children without getting married. And those children did not grow to be particularly successful, let's just say. And unfortunately, many of these people just so happened to live in black communities. Which would explain the disproportionate amount of crimes committed by blacks compared to their white brethren, or even Hispanic for that matter, despite only making up about 13% of the population. And if you look at a good portion of shooters in the United States, most of them were mentally ill. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, mentally ill. Cho sung Wee, mentally ill. The guy in Parkland, mentally ill. Every single one of them was mentally ill. And there was enough evidence to condone just those guys and put them in the bin to make sure they couldn't hurt anyone. But they didn't bother because it would have ruined their futures. <laughs> yeah, well guess what? Now, 13 to 17 to 33 people have all had their futures ruined. So congratulations, jackasses. How well did that turn out? In much of Europe... Well, here's the thing about their crime, is that the majority of their crime comes from primarily religion of peace countries, because these people were so compatible with the West. 
because it's not like they didn't try to conquer gear up the first time. And you know, all has clearly been forgiven with the peaceful grenade attacks and all the trucks of peace. You know, it's not like there's 72 virgins at stake here. And it's not like Rome and Yugoslavia tried similar things and that ended so well the first time, which we have records of, so clearly it's gonna work the second, to the third, to the 100 fucking time. Here are the three countries I'm going to use as an example for what point I'm trying to make. Poland, South Africa, and Australia. When we compare Australia and South Africa, both of them have very, very strict gun laws. And yet Australia is a very, very safe country in terms of its crime. While South Africa sees farmers getting attacked constantly for having a different skin color than the majority of the country. And not only that, but it's also referred to as the rape capital of the world. And Poland has some of the least strict gun laws in the world. However, it has similar crime rates to that of Australia, which is to say very little. But even then, the crime rates in both of those countries were going down Anyways, even before Australia's gun ban, it was still seeing a drop in crime. Whereas in South Africa, the moment they start banning guns, not too long after that, more farmers get attacked for being white. In fact, let's just bring in the United States, which has a pretty high crime rate. But it also has seen a declining crime rate since around 1993, and it's continued to decline since then. But the U.S. also has the least restrictive gun laws in the world, and yet still, when compared to Poland, it has a very high crime rate. That's because a higher crime rate is usually in conjunction with this failing society. If a society has a large amount of crime, the society itself is on its way to failure. This is why so many African countries are failed nations, because the culture simply could not allow them to run in a European-like society because they're just so different. Same thing with the Middle East. They are incompatible with the majority of the world. And simply put, trying to bring these people into the West ended in complete disaster and a bunch of peace trucks. And because they have a culture that is specifically designed to only benefit one culture, one culture, and that is it, Anywhere that goes destroys the culture and causes a fabric of a society to deteriorate. And in the U.S., we've allowed all this crazy bullshit to just sort of manifest itself all over the damn place. We've allowed schizophrenics to run the fucking asylum, and that is exactly what has happened. I don't care how much you yell freedom. It doesn't matter. If people are sick, they need help. Otherwise, they are going to hurt them and anyone else around them, because their disease essentially imprisons them. And if we're talking about that asshole over in Canada, well, he clearly had a ton of mental issues. And I'm not sure if any of these were pointed out, but if they were, then that just shows how bad the system is. How poorly it's set up to deal with these kind of issues. It's only more evidence that Western society is essentially fucked. It's so far down the tube that there's not much that can be done to stop this decline. Oh yeah, and I bet you that Jimmy Kimmel's gonna get on the fucking stage t tomorrow, and he's gonna cry a whole bunch of fucking crocodile tears. And he's gonna fake cry just so he can circle jerk for another five fucking hours. He and his fellow Hollywood dipshit elites don't want to admit that this whole do it feels good attitude is what has destroyed society, that what has caused this crap Honestly, sure, it might feel good to run over a truck, but that doesn't mean you fucking do it, you idiots. But do these Hollywood elites give a shit? No. They're only going to pretend to give a shit because they know very damn well that it makes them look good. It makes them look better than they actually are. Because the moment all this is done, they're going to go back to their pools and their spas, snort some cocaine, and they're going to laugh at their unfunny jokes because they have no personality. And they just don't fucking give a shit. Because guess what? This is just another means to advance their fucking career so they can fucking make money off of it, so they can fucking exploit whatever the fuck the public is doing at this merry moment. And it just pisses me off that this is where it's come to. It really, really pisses me off. Because these fucking celebrities and the rest of fucking society needs to realize is that 
doing what feels good is not the same as doing what is right. And the moral system in the West is a complete mess. The culture has become such a mess in the West that it's just insane. And the West itself needs to look in a fucking mirror to realize, okay, we screwed up. Our society is in complete shambles. And until we look at the issue, stare it right in the face, grab it by the fucking neck, and actually work together, come together as a society to fix these issues, maybe... Just maybe we might see a large decrease in crime. Maybe we might see less people getting killed by car accidents. Maybe we might see less terrorist attacks. Because banning guns, banning knives, banning cars, what has that done to fix the issue? It hasn't done anything. They've banned machine guns, and people still have them. They've banned firearms, they've banned bombs, they've banned knives, and criminals have still, still managed to get their hands on firearms, and they've still managed to kill thousands of people with bombs, and when the next fucking tragedy comes around, the mainstream media and all these comedians are going to just come right back on the stage and say, we need to ban this, we need to ban that, because it worked the first fucking hundred times, it's going to work again. And then the cycle will repeat over and over and over, and it will never, ever stop. Until people realize the individual is not the most important thing in the world, but society as a whole is the most important thing in any country. The individual comes second, because society cannot be safe unless it is a coherent society. It needs to function, and until then, these things are going to happen again. And now I'd like to end the video off by saying that my prayers and condolences go out to the victims and... And I also hope that you all have a good day.